Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing um, how you can get activatory point mutations in the KRAS protein. But before we do that, we're just looking basically at uh, the involvement of KRAS in the um, MAP kinase ERK pathway. So, so far, what we have seen is that the growth factor will bind to its growth factor receptor, change the conformation of that growth factor receptor, and then the growth factor receptors with the growth factor bound will dimerize, and then the process of autophosphorylation occurs, where the uh, tyrosine kinase domain of receptor 1 phosphorylates the tyrosine residues of receptor 2, and the tyrosine kinase domain of receptor 2 phosphorylates the tyrosine residues of receptor 1. Then what happens is this growth factor receptor binding protein 2, or GRB2, comes and binds to the phosphorylated tyrosine residues here. Now, another protein is then going to bind on top of GRB2, and this protein is by the name of SOS, or SOS. Okay? Um, now, what SOS is going to do, once it's bound to this GRB2, it becomes active. And basically, it is going to activate a G protein, a G protein, a monomeric G protein. So not the usual G proteins we're used to in um, G protein coupled receptors. Those are heterotrimeric G proteins. This is a monomeric G protein, and this is finally where we see KRAS. KRAS basically is a monomeric G protein. Now, G proteins are effectively on and off switches. They can have an off state where they are bound to GDP, and then they have an on state when they're bound to GTP. Now, basically, the role of this protein SOS, when it has been activated, is to turn on the monomeric G protein that is KRAS. So it's going to take the KRAS in, it's going to break off that GDP, it's going to grab a GTP molecule from the cytoplasm, and it's going to bind a, a GTP molecule onto the KRAS protein. Okay, now I want to emphasize that KRAS is just a specific type of RAS protein. So when we discussed this um, MAP kinase ERK pathway in full generality, I just put RAS in this position rather than KRAS. KRAS is just a specific type of RAS protein. So there are many different types of RAS protein. It's a whole family of proteins uh, which can all take this place, basically. KRAS is a particularly famous example that's involved in um, colorectal cancer and lung cancer, basically. Um, so um, that's why we're looking at KRAS specifically. Okay, so here is this KRAS protein, and we'll have it in purple. Right, so KRAS has now been turned on, basically, by the binding of GTP. Now, um, what uh, KRAS now does is it goes and activates another protein. It goes and binds to another protein, which we'll show over here. So here is our KRAS protein, and it's going to bind. So here it is in its on state, which means that it has GTP bound to it. And basically, now that it's in this on state, it's going to bind and activate another protein by the name of BRAF. Okay, and this is a kinase enzyme. Now, it's not a tyrosine kinase, it's a serine threonine kinase. Okay, so this is BRAF. Okay, and again, when we looked at this pathway, um, this MAP kinase ERK pathway in full generality, uh, we just called this RAF, RAF kinase it was back then. We didn't call it um, BRAF. Now, because we are talking specifically about KRAS, so we're talking about a specific type of RAS protein, there is also a specific type of RAS, RAF protein which is activated by KRAF, uh, KRAS rather. Um, so BRAF is the specific RAF protein which is activated by KRAS. Okay, so KRAS, in its on state, binds to uh, BRAF, and BRAF now becomes active. So it's going to become an active serine threonine kinase. So let me remind you of the structure of the amino acid serine and threonine, and then uh, we can discuss what phosphorylation of that means. So uh, the amino acid serine and threonine then. So again, the basic amino acid structure is you have an amino terminus here, 
then an alpha carbon in the centre with a hydrogen coming off it, and then a carboxyl group down here, which or a carboxylic acid group, whatever you want to call it. And then, in the case of serine, the R group is you have a methylene group coming off like so, and then a hydroxyl group coming off that methylene group. So this is serine. Okay? And then the structure of threonine is very similar to serine, so let's draw that here. Again, you have the amino group, uh, after which the amino acid is named, an alpha carbon here with a hydrogen coming off it, and again you have this carbon with a hydroxyl group coming off it, and a single hydrogen, but then, instead of another hydrogen, you then have a methyl group here. Okay, and that now is the R group of uh, the threonine amino acid. And then just to finish the amino acid structure off, you have the carboxylic acid group down here. So this is threonine. Whoops, threonine. Right, so these hydroxyl groups here can also be phosphorylated. So they can also have phosphate groups added onto them. So if this is a phosphate group here, a phosphorus atom at the centre, double bonded to an oxygen, two hydroxyl groups, and then single bonded to an oxygen with a negative charge, which has acquired an electron from somewhere ionically. Again, what you can have is a condensation reaction occurring where the hydroxyl group of the phosphate group combines with the hydro hydrogen from the hydroxyl group from the amino acid uh, to make water. And then what happens is this oxygen here is going to link with the phosphorus atom of the phosphate group. OK, so that's how you phosphorylate a serine residue, and you can imagine that the same thing will happen for threonine. But again, generally, serine threonine kinases, which is what BRAF is an example of, a serine threonine kinase, they generally work uh, by uh, coupling the phosphorylation of the uh, serine threonine amino acid to the hydrolysis of ATP, and they get the uh, phosphate group, which they're going to stick on to the uh, hydroxyl group of the serine or threonine from um, cleaving the ATP into ADP. Okay, right. So, that's what this BRAF is. So, it's going to add phosphate groups onto um, serine and threonine residues of other proteins. Now, uh, one of the um, proteins which it adds phosphate groups onto is a protein known as MEC or MEC kinase. So basically, let me draw this enzyme here. So here is the MEC kinase. And basically, when BRAF adds a phosphate group onto it, it activates this MEC kinase enzyme. Now, MEC kinase is another serine threonine kinase itself. So let's show, let's say that this uh, circle here represents the phosphate group that the BRAF uh, serine threonine kinase has added on to the MEC kinase. So this is the MEC kinase. Now, MEC kinase, the full name of MEC kinase is that it is the mitogen activated, so I'll write its full name out. It is the mitogen activated protein kinase kinase. So mitogen activated um, protein kinase kinase. Or some people will refer to it as the MAP kinase kinase. So instead of um, saying mitogen activated protein, they'll abbreviate that to MAP. So it's the mitogen activated protein kinase kinase. And what we'll see is the reason it's called that is that it itself is a serine threonine kinase, and it's going to phosphorylate the mitogen activated protein kinase. So indeed, it is the kinase enzyme for the mitogen-activated protein kinase. So, because of this full name, it's often sometimes also abbreviated to MAPKK. So, you might see people call it MAPKK, or you might also hear people refer to it as MAP2K. So, instead of writing just two Ks, they write 2K like that. All of those names are referring to this exact same protein, this MEC kinase enzyme here. Right, okay, so once you've added this phosphate group onto this MEC kinase, it now becomes active. So it's now an active serine threonine kinase itself, and it is going to then phosphorylate um, another kinase, in name it's going to phosphorylate the mitogen-activated protein kinase. 
and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.